Hello, my Crystalliers, and welcome to a new series on the channel where I get to play Firewatch. Okay, so in this winter um, sale, I decided to finally buy Firewatch. I've never played Firewatch ever. I've seen not much of it other than promotional artwork that I love, and you know how this goes. I love the artwork, and a lot of the games that I play on my channel um, are almost based on how much I love the artwork. Um, I heard a lot of good things about this game. Um, I'm very anxious to get going, so I'm going to go ahead and hit new game, and let's get this story on the road. I don't 100% know what I'm going to you know, get myself into. I don't know much about it, but I know it's very story-driven. I know it's first person. Um, I just heard great things about it, and I'm very excited to play it. I'm very, very excited to play this finally. Campo Santo presents... Let me turn up my volume. Incorporation with Panic Inc. Seems so, you know, seems like such an event, you know. So, Boulder, Colorado, 1975. I didn't expect that, actually, but I guess that does set the stage. You see Julia. Set the stage for, like, not having advanced technology. Because I feel like, I'm not 100% sure. Um... Do I press something? Oh, I do. I do press something. She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and with the left one. The left one seems more, I don't know, normal. You start the word major, and it smells like coors. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she, she says. And I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? What's the... Was that a burn, you ask? She says... She says, def definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split cheese with one week, one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Oh. Okay, awesome. I thought this was going to be like a love story, will, will they, won't they kind of thing. But I'm just straight up her boyfriend. Okay, so Julia and I, we hooked up. Oh, I can see my arms and, oh, I can see my body. I look like a Team Fortress 2 guy. Uh, okay, I'm not using a mouse, so I don't know why it's showing up with the mouse. You know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and use the mouse. I'm going to put away my um, thing. Okay, cool. Oh, awesome. Okay. This is a nice model of the elevator. I'm, I'm already like loving everything, and it's just some dirty garage. I'm assuming that's my car. Let me walk. Yeah, let me walk over here though. Some garbage. Some place. I can't walk any faster. Okay. I'm gonna assume that I can't go over there. It seems like there's a lock gate. I just want to kind of get the game going, you know. Nice animation there. Cool little visual blur. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. <laughs> you move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Amen to that, brother. Julia wants to get a dog. Oh, that's a little... I don't know if you guys... You guys can probably see my mouse on. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring... Oh, I thought she was saying that. She wants to bring it bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking the dog. It's bad, eh? You pick up the beagle, and she names him Bucket. You adopt the shepherd and name him Mayhem. That's a weird name for a shepherd. Mayhem? But I, I love I love German Shepherds a lot. Um, I don't think I've ever met one though. Like I I I don't have a friend that owns one. I do have a friend that has a husky, and I'm so happy. Now I'm thinking about it right now. I want to go hang out with him just to hang out with his dog. Uh, my friend, my friend's name is Gabriel. We do the Dark Souls um, playthrough. I'm gonna pick the beagle though. 
Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. Okay, that's a weird thing to say about forgetting the other guy, but okay. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m. And the heat still radiates off of the high, high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Dang, are we married? Kids. They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some... Uh, if you, you and I have some. A couple little idiots. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. One day, why rush? Um, dang, this could kind of make or break kind of thing, to be honest, I feel like. But, okay, let's see. Um, uh, I I'm going to say, why rush? She looks away, out towards the mountains. You have plenty of time, right? Speak for yourself, mister. <laughs> Don't worry, I sh you assure her. Tell her she has the body of an undergrad. <laughs> My ovaries didn't get the memo, she says, <laughs> laughing it off. One day, okay? Okay, one day, she says. Six months later, you get engaged lying in bed on a Sunday morning. Uh, on a Sunday morning. Awesome. I did not I did not expect this whole, like, setup at all. Okay. Colors are amazing. Let's see what we got over here. Thoroughfare trail, Trailhead. Okay, this is a map. Basin, Jonesy Lake, Thunder Canyon, blah blah blah. We are in their country. Learn to live with bears. Warning. Not recommended for inexperienced hikers. No fireworks. Do not forget to check in. Okay. Oh man. So pretty. I love what they did for the sky. It almost looks like a painting. It probably is a painting to be honest. I'm fading out. I'm blacking out, man. Too many beers. It's a Thursday night, and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angry by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she you fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad. You ignore her. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Um. Either of these doesn't seem like a good thing at all. I don't. I feel like ignoring is worse though. You call her an in. Oh, okay. Didn't, didn't see that. She tells you to go F yourself and not to be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. Okay, maybe that wasn't good. <laughs> I feel like not having a fight is bad though, you know? Don't bottle it in. Just talk about it. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He Man. You probably look like a victorious secret model. <laughs> uh, um, probably look like a victorious secret model seems nice and funny, like a playful kind of thing. Very nice. <laughs> oh, uh, oh. Okay. So I'm assuming that they're just doing some expositiony stuff, some character building. Uh, and then they're cutting back to uh, Henry uh, doing his job. Like, this is just him. Just another day at the job, blah, blah. And they're just telling me about who these people are. Two forks, look out tower. Eight more miles still. Okay. So, uh, space for to climb over objects. Okay. There we go. Easy piece. It's a beautiful sunset. Oh. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Oh crap. Bucket. Bucket gets kicked. B -b 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 dog Julia yells. <laughs> she gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away. You beat his face in. Yeah, I kind of want to beat his face in a little bit. So, Bucket gets kicked. Julia's flustered. I confront the attacker, you scare him away, you beat his face in. I'm gonna try to scare him. Because... I feel it's like... Hopefully I don't be, like end up looking like a freaking psycho or something. You reach in your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. You manage to scare all three of you? He runs away. Julie asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. 
From then on, you walk by the river. So, what, I scared everyone around me when I said that? Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Okay. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. We absolutely do not. Convince her not a big job or figure if she commutes back and forth. How many miles? 2,000 miles away? She cannot commute back and forth. 2,000 miles? It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. We absolutely do not. Whew, this game. You tell her that this means you two won't have a family. She says that that's BS. She's totally right. She asks if uh, her taking the job means you won't come with her. You say yes. Again, BS. But she decides not to take it. This is like I'm have, I'm like being force fed their whole entire life, and I'm making their decisions for them. Uh, Julia is asked to leave Boulder on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was fine crying the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and forget to, and forget to and try to forget about it. She was fine crying the stairwell. Talk to someone about it? Make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. This is so difficult, guys. Like, I'm getting so, like, what is going on? I'll make this episode a long one. What the heck? I don't know what the. I don't know. Forgetting about it doesn't seem like a good thing, but then this might offend her or whatever. But it's a good thing, though. Screw it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they're worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. We both decide to keep it a secret for now. Dementia? Holy crap, that's terrible. What is happening? I thought I was gonna... Okay. Now I'm here. What's gonna happen, man? <laughs> Ew! <laughs> oh, that's awesome, because that's... Oh, okay. That's the pose I did. <laughs> that was kind of wait that was her journal she drew that Bucket is getting older Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house why was I naked by the way anyways uh, a week later she goes back to the university okay Julia's affliction gets worse she can't remember things in class her research is in shambles she drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Oh man. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she, gets, she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Oh, man. This is really sad. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel and the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. Oops. Okay. That was an accident, but I kind of wanted that decision. That was an accident, though. I can't see my mouse until I click it, which is a you know, big detriment to that whole scene. But... Okay, so... Yeah, I clicked the one that said um, I was determined to take care of her myself um what's going on down there is that some sort of geyser hole or something or is that just mist oh hello what's up buddy hi please don't kill me or anything okay cool it is impossibly hard 
The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door. You trust that she sleeps like a rock. <sighs> Jeez. This game, man. I haven't even played it, and I'm having trouble with this. Whew. You put a chair in front of the door. I mean, I am worried about it. What about locking it? Isn't there like a lock? Just lock it. Unless it's on the inside, then I guess she'll just know how to unlock it. Which, I'm sure she could. Oh, jeez. I'll try the chair thing, I guess. I don't want her to, like, leave. Uh, let's try the chair thing. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. Okay. One night you stop you stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point ten and are taken to jail for the night. Holy oh, crap! You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law Susan. Oh my god. Julia's parents take the plane from Australia, and they can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer's coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. It's like a... oh, you take it. It's like a visual novel. Not that many visuals yet, but... Sheesh. I did not expect this as the intro to the game, but it does... build up a lot of like... it's, it's really uh, awesome character building. Enter the lookout tower. Well. Here we go. Whew. Let's go into the tower. I don't know how far into the future I am. I don't know what's my what's the state of my wife Julia. I think we're married, right? I have a ring on my finger, don't I? There's an outhouse over there. The night sky looks beautiful. An awesome moon. Oh man. Awesome mountains. Um great way to set the stage, huh guys? Um Alright. Turn on the tower. Okay. Alright. Hello, Two Forks oh. Tower. Hi. What's up, Delilah, I think? Reply. How? Hold left shift to activate radio. Hello? Oh, select dialogue. Uh, release left shift to talk to dial. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. Okay. So, what's wrong with you? What's wrong Excuse with me? me? People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. What is she doing? You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I what, sleep forever? <laughs> what? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. What is going on right now? Uh, you've killed three ex-husbands? You're rebelling against mom? Nobody back home can stand you? Okay, um, you're probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids, by the sound of your voice, at least 15 years ago. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? <laughs> well, she also says I fuck immature men, but... <laughs> In my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? <laughs> Me. I'm going. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Let's see. 
I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close? Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. Alright, watch. Wow. This is weird, man. Like, I'm just... I, I know I haven't said anything for like the last five minutes or whatever, but like, I'm just at, in awe, kind of, like, just trying to take everything in, you know? Good morning, Henry. Well, Hi. I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept <sighs> like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the episode here. Um, I'm very excited to start the next episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm having a great time. This is just a completely just different experience. Uh, so yeah, my name is Crystal Face, and I'll see you in the next episode of Firewatch.